Okay, so video on repinching sleeves. Um, I have this notebook that I write all my all my ideas and stuff that I come up with. Um, so basically, this is all explaining how repinching a sleeve works. Um, Repinching, also called resizing sleeves, is a way to renew an engine's compression without having to buy a new piston and sleeve. This comes in very helpful when you have an old engine that doesn't um, doesn't have any spare parts available for it, like the Serial that I'm rebuilding right now. This is the piston and sleeve for it. I doubt they make pistons and sleeves for that engine anymore. There are two ways to repinch or resize a sleeve. One is to make it as tight as a brand new engine. Doing this will require a full re-breaking in of the engine. It is recommended that you get a new connecting rod as the engine will be very tight and a worn rod is quite prone to failure just because of the way the tolerances are. You don't want it to be, you don't want these uh, brass bushings to be too loose. Um, number two, making it as tight as it was when the engine was in its prime. Basically, that's saying once you had the engine fully broken in and it was running best optimal fuel mileage, optimal performance. Most engines, that's usually from the two to six gallon mark. Somewhere within there, some engines for their optimal performance will be later in their lifespan, maybe three to seven gallons. It just depends on how the company designs their engine and what materials they use. Um, this allows you to not really need to re-break in the engine or do a very short break in. Um, so that's maybe one to two tanks. One to two tanks of idling, three to four maybe. And then another two to three tanks with a conservative tune um, on the track and then you can give it a reasonable race tune. This, t uh, this type of repinch uh, likely won't last as many gallons as a repinch like brand new, but it makes it so a new connecting rod isn't completely necessary just because the engine is fairly used to running with those tolerances, the more worn tolerances. So it's not gonna be as stressful but it is always a good reassurance to have a new connecting rod, no matter what, whenever you rebuild an engine. But if it's an old engine like this, can't find a connecting rod, kinda just have to deal with it. A correctly repinched sleeve should have zero resistance until the point of the stroke that the pinch is intended to start. So a repinched or resized sleeve if you resize it like a brand new sleeve, I'm pretty sure I explained this in the video already because I'm recording this after I recorded the video, but I'm putting this in as the intro. But a brand new sleeve repinches fairly early in the stroke. The piston goes up and probably right as the hole for the wrist pin um, passes the exhaust port right around there is around is where the pinch for most brand new engines start. Um, so when I repinch the sleeve, there needs to be no resistance. It should slide very free up and down until right where the pinch would start. But if I repinch it to be like an engine that has two maybe three gallons on it then the the pinch will start right here instead right after the bottom of the hole for the wrist pin um passes the exhaust port so there should be zero resistance the entirety of the stroke until right here um, i explained that right here a sleeve pinched like new will pinch a little above the exhaust port and a sleeve pinched like an already broken in engine or one that has a few gallons on it will pinch just before probably two two millimeters around there before top dead center.
Okay, so here's what a cross section or like an example of what a correctly repinched sleeve would look like. I have the taper for the pinch exaggerated, so in that way it's it's easier to see. So this engine is pinched to br or this sleeve is pinched to be like brand new. So you have a piston here, traveling up the stroke. It says the pinch starts here, good distance till top dead center, probably three and a half four millimeters. A pinch in, a pin, a sleeve pinched to be like it's already broken in. As you can see the piston's much farther up in the stroke. Um, pinch is just before top dead center, probably around two millimeters, just before top dead center. Um, two and a half millimeters is probably where you start to feel the taper come in, and then two millimeters is where it, m most of the resistance is. So. Yeah, that's what a correctly resized um, or repinched sleeve looks like. And then we're gonna get into the tutorial. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so because my other video that I uploaded showing how to repinch a piston and sleeve or resize a piston and sleeve was very vague on how to do it, honestly. Here's a more in-depth version. So, um, first I'm gonna start off with the tools that you need. So you're gonna need this clamp. This is a 7 8 inch clamp. Um, not sure exactly what they're called, but I will put the link for them in the description. <coughs> uh, you need a copper tube with an inner diameter that matches the outer diameter of the sleeve. So if I take my calipers here and measure the outer diameter of the sleeve, see it's three and a quarter inches or three quarter inches. <coughs> so I got a three quarter inch inner diameter there and it opens up a little bit when I cut this notch. And this is just under uh, four millimeters thick, which that's a good thickness for pinching because the pinch will start when the piston is right around here, which is right about where you want it to start, just before top dead center. And I have this, so I put a socket extension and then oh right there 3 16 inch and a 3 16 inch socket so I can put it on the end of the allen key like this so I can get extra leverage but that's only if I've clamped this tight as tight as I can get it with just the allen key and the pinch still isn't tight enough just because it varies in between or it varies between different engines and the way they design their sleeves. This is a the piston and sleeve from that Serio that I'm rebuilding right now. I should have bearings in a couple weeks. So as you can see right here, the pinch starts right around here, which is completely normal. But it's easy to push it up and then right there is a little bit farther than you want it to stop. And that's about as far as it goes. And you can see just the slightest bit of gap. Just the slightest bit of gap right here from the piston skirt and the bottom of the exhaust port. And you don't want the, the skirt of the piston to come up past that because then you'll have all your air fuel coming out of there instead of staying inside the engine. First, I'm going to start with putting this over here. You don't have to line up this. Oh, I should probably explain what this cutout is for. So, the notch in here is so this. This is a perfect circle when there's a little bit of gap right here and right here. But when you clamp it down all the way, it's not a perfect circle. As you can see, 
it's a little bit too or a little bit wider here and narrower here so with this it'll squeeze evenly as you crush it because if you don't then you're gonna have so there's huge gaps right there and right there but then it's closer right here and right here so if you get a three quarter inch clamp instead of a seventh eighth then it's not gonna pinch this very evenly and it's way too thick you don't want your pinch starting below the exhaust port so I start by putting the copper tubing right there and slide that in there now with most .21 sleeves this part shouldn't fall through in into the clamp if you have it closed enough but if it is able to go in there just make sure it doesn't because you don't want to pinch this you don't want to pinch this part right here because you still want your head button to be able to fit in there so now that it's in here I don't have the piston in there but you do want to make sure you have the piston on hand so I tighten it down just a little bit the piston intake side and intake side or exhaust side and exhaust side lined up and push it up and as you can see it is just a little ways down from where the carbon buildup is from top dead center and that's how you want it to be you want it to be a little bit below there so I'm gonna just do a light clamp, not anything too crazy. And then when I loosen it up, I'm gonna use this notch on the piston that is used to line, or the sleeve that is used to line up the sleeve in the block. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees like that. And I'll line it up with this gap in between the two. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down again. And you wanna tighten these screws as evenly as you can. So tighten this one a little bit, tighten that one a little bit. I just hold it. So I'm just starting off, I'm not really cranking down on it, so I'm gonna get too tight. As I mean, this is how it appears holding, and probably not cranking on it. So I'm gonna get the two tightened as it's not feeling. Was the first round of pinching. Let's see what it's like. So we got the intake side lined up with the intake port. Okay, it still goes too high. You can still see that gap in between the skirt in the bottom of the exhaust port so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go again do the same procedure but this time I put the piston in I'm gonna have it a little bit farther down this time, so you can see. Bring it up a little bit higher than that. So. Loosen that. Like an eighth of a turn. Push it up just a little bit further. There you go. So now, not too far away from top dead center. But we are still below that. And then this time I'll tighten it a little bit more.
lot of times when I actually get it pretty tight, I have to put the Allen wrench in right like this, and then I hold it down against my table like that. And then it'll loosen it. And because I have the piston in there, even though I'm really cranking down on this, that piston keeps it from getting too, too tight. And then if it's not tight enough, but I'm still cranking down on it as hard as I can, I'll usually move the piston lower down in the stroke a little bit. The second time around, doing the four, rotating it. Let's see what it's like this time. So everything's lined up. Intake and intake. Okay. You can see where the top dead center is. stops right there just below it there's no gap down here and I don't know how well you can see it but there is the slightest gap between the bottom of this line of carbon buildup and the top of the piston probably like half a millimeter So that is the ideal repinch. This is gonna require very little break-in, probably three to four tanks of idling, and then about two, maybe three more tanks of conservative running on the track, and then it's good to go. So that is an absolutely perfect repinch, and it just stops right there. So, yeah. Basically, it's doing this is trial and error. The more you do it, the better you get at it because the more you figure out how tight you need to make it and especially if you work with a lot of the same engine you'll kind of get a feel for what that engine likes like the uh track star here i have this one that i custom tuned or modified or whatever i have amt on it because ash morales is my name and then i tuned this more aggressively for a truggy so that's why the t is there but yeah, I recently repinched this, so I'm gonna br be breaking this in soon. But I made this one a little bit on the tight side, not as tight as a different track star that I repinched for my brother's buggy, and not a, it's about the same tightness as the other one that I made a video on. But yeah, the track stars they don't require much. Um, cranking down on here it, it, it doesn't take much to get them well repinched but from doing this serial sleeve and doing the Novorossi sleeve which I do have another piston sleeve for it uh, somewhere over here but I'll make another video on that but I do have another piston sleeve for the Novorossi and I repinched the sleeve that got destroyed because of the piston clip um, or wrist pin clip came out. That one took some cranking down, but not like unnecessary. I didn't have to use this. I would like to know the torque specs needed to get a well repinched sleeve like this one, but, um, you do it enough, you get the feel for it. Like now that I've repinched three of the track stars, I know, okay, I don't need to crank down super hard on it for it to be repinched well. They do pinch kind of weird though. 
because even if you don't pinch them super hard, they still have a lot of mechanical pinch. They get uh, stuck in the pinch very easily. So a good break in works that mechanical pinch out very quickly. But, uh, yeah, that's how you resize a piston and sleeve.